Welcome back into Wake Up America. I'm Rob Finnerty. From the hottest app in the world to not at all right now, companies like Amazon, Apple, Google, and virtually all of Parler's business associates have cut ties with the free speech platform. The network was cruising along as the number one app in America, gaining quickly in popularity on all accounts, uh, right up until basically the riots that we saw last week on Capitol Hill. They were yanked and the platform has been taken down. Joining us this morning to talk about all this is the chief policy officer at Parler, Amy Peacock. Amy, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Uh, this is just hugely concerning, and it should be to all Americans, not just conservative Americans. This should be to all Americans. First Amendment rights are, there's a reason it's the very First Amendment and, and not, you know, the 11th or 10th or 6th. It's, it's our, one of our most important rights as Americans. Um, Parler is gone. It seems like in conjunction with Twitter, uh, these big tech companies are, are enormous now. The power they wield is huge. Uh, tell us about the last couple days at Parler. Well, we were surprised on Friday by first Apple uh, sending us notice that we had to make certain changes. Uh, otherwise, they were going to pull us from the App Store within 24 hours. And then about an hour and a half later, a notice from Amazon. The thing that was interesting about Amazon is that they had communicated with me a couple days before that and sent a, a message about inciting content in general, no specific content. And I wrote back to them and I said, we are dealing with this content like everybody else on the internet, because of course it's not only, it was not only on Parler, it was everywhere, given the unusual and uh, I, you know, I think very, uh, nobody, nobody anticipated that it was gonna be this bad last week, right? Um, Given those unusual events, it was everywhere. And I said, we we're dealing with this content. We're cooperating with law enforcement. Let me know if you would like to discuss further. And I received a reply on Thursday saying that this was for your information and we consider this matter resolved. And that was Thursday. Friday afternoon is when we got the notice later. It was, you know, about three, I think, my time. And uh, we've been scrambling ever since. I mean, no company to. can make that change that quickly. It doesn't matter how big you are, if you're Facebook or Twitter, no company can be expected to react uh, that quickly to uh, a, a mandate like that. Could this destroy Parler? I mean, it could. We are fighting to get back online and find different vendors for this. But again, the, the short notice and the inability for, or at least the unwillingness for them to work with us as we go for a solution we had our tech team scrambling all weekend, figuring out ways that we could tag this content, and they were working on that. And we were speaking, uh, having communications with Amazon yesterday, and they would not allow us to implement this system and see if it would satisfy. And again, I believe this is a very unusual time. Mm. Nobody wants this content on their platform. It's both illegal and it's contrary to the mission of Parler. We're a nonpartisan town square right. and the whole purpose is to have productive discussion you can't have that with incitement to violence at the same time we very much think we would want to avoid living in orwell's 1984 where every piece of content online is scanned whether there's any particularized suspicion or not and so we had been working towards a solution everybody was i think a bit surprised at least about how events went this last week. It's a very unusual circumstance and the content was everywhere. Yeah. So we do believe we were singled out. Yeah. And, and basically they are trying to claim that the company was responsible ostensibly for what happened on Wednesday. Is that correct? The, they were trying to say that, but we know that there were groups, groups on Facebook were a much more efficient way to plan something. We don't have a groups feature. We have been planning to bring one out. Uh, I, you know, I think that that planning, if there was any planning of these events, it was going on in other places where there were more efficient tools to do that. Amy, shouldn't shouldn't people just every American, whether this is this is a political, this issue is completely a political. If we were on CNN or MSNBC right now, I, I would conduct this interview the exact same way. This is not a partisan segment on Newsmax. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitter and many of these other social media companies, particularly Facebook, seem to only censor one way. I was looking at it this morning. This is still active. The Ayatollah Khamenei still has a Twitter account. Many extremist groups still have Twitter accounts. But Parler is singled out and taken down. Your thoughts? Yes. I mean, we have a reputation of being a conservative platform, even though we have always been nonpartisan in all of our policies. And, you know, we opened this 
public square for everyone to come have discussions. That's been our position throughout. And we think that having a nonpartisan forum for discussion where people can actually discuss varying viewpoints and important issues of the day and come to some sort of understanding of each other is a very important thing. And at the same time, we want to provide that while respecting people's privacy. And that's been our mission all along. By the way, that George Orwell book that you mentioned, uh, 1984, it shot up. It's one of the most popular books on Amazon. Uh, it was. You know, it's not supposed to be an instruction manual. Yeah. It's yeah. not supposed to. It's a dystopian novel. No, absolutely. Um, how concerning is it right now that big tech companies are, are trying so actively to limit? Uh, and by the way, you mentioned it's become sort of it's evolved. Parlor's evolved into sort of a uh, a, a messaging board for for uh, conservative voices. And, and you said that with a little hesitation. And I understand that as a conservative, it seems like every time you say that, it's like you're you're saying something you shouldn't be saying. It, it's okay to be a conservative in this country. Uh, how concerning is it to you that places like the Department of Justice haven't stepped in here to sort of override this? Uh, you know, I mean, there, there's one thing about this, right? We have, like I said, been cooperating with law enforcement uh, because there have been some people that they wanted to get information about in connection with the events of January 6th. And as far as I know, I haven't, you know, it's early this morning, and everything just got taken down while I was uh, asleep overnight. Right. I don't think I can even access data to help anybody with it. So, you know, it's, um, it's, I don't think this is going to be good for anybody. It's not good for freedom of expression. It's not good for anybody trying to help prevent or address the events that might take place in the real world. Yeah. You know, we all think that social media is the reality, but the concern for me has always been, are people actually going to use these words and take some action in the real world? And what can I do to, you know, try to help that that doesn't take place? And the best thing I think you can do is cooperate with those requests. And how, how can we do that now, right? Amy, Facebook, um, but, uh, yeah. Parler, by the way, if you're just joining us right now, this is Amy Peacock, an executive with Parler. Uh, Parler is a, it was a very fast-growing uh, social media uh, company. Uh, Facebook, by the way, had pages for Hezbollah and ISIS at one point, um, and, and those obviously probably could be safely considered extremists. I want to get your reaction to the Apple and Amazon. This is the language they put out. They said that parlors being taken down because they, quote, have not demonstrated it can adequately address threats of violence. Your take on that. Okay, so as I said, this content is everywhere. And it's clear to me that the standard that they want is, uh, you know, that they want everybody to meet is one that requires the installation of a machine learn learning algorithm, some sort of AI that is going to detect all of this. And we, of course, have resisted that again because we want to respect user privacy. We believe that innocent people about whom you have no particularized suspicion right. should not be surveilled. That's the principle of the Fourth Amendment of our Constitution, and we have tried to embody that on Parler. So we say if we become aware of this content, we take it down as quickly as possible. But scanning every piece of content on the internet all the time. That is Orwell's 1984, and we want to avoid it. You might do it for a short time in, in an emergency measure. Maybe we say this week is, but those companies were not working with us on this. We were trying to explore solutions, and they just shut us down. Yeah, it's... Uh, I Back to the First Amendment, shouldn't it just be up to the American people to decide to go to these, these use these social media platforms and then decide for themselves, uh, you know, which way they want to think or lean or anything? Isn't that the design? Yes. And I mean, that was one of the features, of course, as well on Parler, is that we did not have policies against so-called misinformation. Uh, you know, people can think critically and decide for themselves. And, you know, with even with respect to some of this content, that was inciting out there, there was plenty of critical thinking yeah. about this. There were some conspiracy theories behind it. And you would see in the comments, you know, this is organic fact checking from people on Parler saying, really, and questioning this and, and having the discussion. And that's what we think is healthy. It's just terrible. We appreciate you joining us on this Monday. This is going to be a conversation we're going to be having all week long, uh, to say the least. Uh, Amy Peacock, thank you so much. Keep us posted. Thank you. We will. 
You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.